A patent ductus arteriosus is an example of an acyanotic heart defect. Uh, you'll recall from embryology that the ductus arteriosus is a uh, shunt in fetal circulation from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. Um, you'll see over here on the right side an example of a patent ductus arteriosus. Uh, again, it's connecting the pulmonary artery uh, and the aorta here. And, and uh, this is an acyanotic heart defect again because um, in a newborn, the aorta is a much higher pressure vessel compared to the pulmonary artery. So blood will flow uh, down the pressure gradient from the aorta into the pulmonary artery here. And again, uh, blood in the aorta is already oxygenated um, and oxygenated blood is still flowing uh, at into, into systemic circulation. Uh, so there shouldn't be uh, cyanosis at presentation. Um, we expect these defects to close uh, usually within 24 hours of delivery. Uh, and if they don't, that's when we call them a patent ductus arteriosus. Uh, and a high yield association here is with uh, congenital rubella. So mothers that are infected with rubella during pregnancy, uh, they run the risk of having a child with a patent ductus arteriosus, as well as some of the other features of a congenital rubella syndrome. And these patients on physical exam will have a continuous machine-like murmur. And uh, what does continuous mean? That means it's a murmur that's present in both systole uh, and diastole. So if you ever have a question stem about a murmur present in both systole and diastole, uh, or you have a question where you have to put on the headphones and listen to a murmur and you hear it in both systole and diastole, uh, chances are it's caused by PDA. And another uh, physiology point you should be aware of here is uh, the effect of uh, PDA on diastolic blood pressure. Uh, there'll actually be a drop in the diastolic blood pressure uh, in the setting of a PDA uh, because again, blood is being pulled away uh, from the aorta into the pulmonary artery. And uh, it happens that uh, that happens preferentially during diastole. And uh, as a result of this decreased uh, diastolic blood pressure, we'll have an increased uh, pulse pressure as well. And um, again, we'll evaluate these patients with echo. And it's uh, particularly important in a patent ductus arteriosus patient because uh, if the patient has another uh, comorbid structural heart defect, uh, for example, uh, transition of the great vessels or tetralogy of flow uh, that we'll mention uh, in another video, they might be dependent on the PDA uh, to oxygenate their blood. That may be the only connection uh, between the right side and the left side of the heart. So if you uh, assume that it needs to be closed, uh, you may cut off the patient's uh, only access to their pulmonary circulation. And uh, that brings us to the treatment. So how do we treat these patients? Uh, if we are confident that there's no uh, comorbid uh, structural heart defect, uh, we can treat these patients with uh, endomethacin, which is an NSAID, and that should close the uh, patent ductus arteriosus. And uh, if we note another uh, heart defect that requires the PDA to be open, we can maintain that PDA, keep it open uh, by administering uh, prostaglandin E1. And a uh, kind of pharmacology tie-in here is uh, something that could help you remember the treatment here. So NSAIDs, like endomethacin, uh, block the, the production of prostaglandins, thus uh, they would close the uh, patent ductus arteriosus, whereas uh, prostaglandins themselves will keep it open.